but I've also seen videos out there that uh, have only been viewed three or four hundred times, or maybe 30 times, and you think, gosh, is it really worth the effort if only 30 people, 300 people are gonna view this video? What you need to understand about the web, and the point, uh, question about the video uh, first up, is market segmentation, that in an online context, the market fragments into many, many different segments. I'm not talking 10 or 100 segments, I'm talking thousands of segments. Whole series of niches. So the niche market for a particular Yamaha guitar out there, because this is a global platform, might only be three or four or 500 people, but it's dead on the money for the three or four or 500 people that have an interest in this particular guitar or this video, this is as good as it gets for them. Google searches through YouTube and Google picks up on the keywords around particular videos and will quite readily serve it as a result on page one if it thinks the video is a relevant result over and above the normal web pages or maps or news items or images and so forth. If you had a video up about it as these people do and somebody was interested in buying that particular product, and they're not just gonna search for guitars or Yamaha guitars, they know exactly what they want. They want the SG-1000, that's what they'll type into Google, and that's what we find on page one, over and above forums, the actual uh, official uh, Yamaha site in the UK, the images, as I said, and two, not just one, but two videos that allow people to engage with it. If I were to click on that, it'll take me back to the uh, YouTube channel, uh, to see the video. As I said, hopefully the branding and the call to action is in place uh, and so forth. And uh, if all our ducks are in a line and everything works the way we wanted it to, that's gonna convert into a sale. And that ultimately is what it's all about. We're not just uploading it to make ourselves feel good that we've got stuff up on YouTube. We actually want to drive incremental sales as a result. The kids love this, 253,000 views and it keeps on going. And that's one of the nice things about launching a campaign through the web is that once it's up, you don't have to keep throwing money at it for it to uh, continue to be played. Now, for the people that produce this video, this is amazing market research opportunity for them, okay? Without asking, without paying anybody, real people out there are motivated to the point that they actually wanna leave comments about the video or the brand and so forth. And for the producers or the Cancer Council themselves, they're able to come into this platform and dig through those comments and pull some uh, fairly interesting insights out as to how the video is being received or even sort of gauge how people are feeling about uh, cancer within that age group and so forth. Or uh, in many instances, it's, it's possible just to take the, uh, the video or the content set and plug it directly into Facebook or MySpace or your blog without having to deal with any code at all. Um, embedded on news.com.au. So this is where it starts to creep its way, syndicated content, if you will, into other platforms, a very mainstream organization, news.com.au. And more so what we're finding these days is that uh, interesting stories, communications, marketing uh, tales and so forth are being picked up by mainstream media because they're trawling through the online space for their stories. So it actually jumps the, the species barrier. The thing that's really becoming the currency for individuals and businesses on the web, it's about genuine, being genuine, being transparent, being open, being you. And these sorts of mediums, digital, uh, especially video, pick up on that very, very readily. So if you've got a sales video, you can tell whether the sales guy's bullshitting or not. You, you can just, you can see it in his eyes. You just know. So this is a fantastic opportunity for all of the genuine operators out there to really sincere, sincerely get their message across. And that's why we don't want too much spin. If anything, we want a bit of grittiness. We want real people saying real things in a real environment. Okay, have a little more fun. I mean, the corporate speak that we're exposed to through corporate 1.0 websites all about core competencies and best of breed and state of art and solutions, it's bullshit. And you, we know it's bullshit. We actually just turn off automatically. We don't even know we're doing it. We're so inundated with this stuff that has no meaning. I don't even know what core competencies means. 
If you can get real messages out there and speak more like a human, get down and dirty with real people, I think you're going to interact and engage with these people more readily. And this is where the, the market segmentation starts to kick in again. If you can appeal to smaller and smaller groups and be comfortable about talking to those segments, those small communities in a way that resonates with them, you'll do a lot better than trying to speak loud to one big homogenous group at once. Okay, sort of try and tailor your message and be more relevant to the, to the target audience. The reason that companies, that marketers have not done this in the past is because of cost. It was too hard to segment the market through mainstream media. You really just had one go of it and you tried to go for the maximum amount of exposure. Okay, that's not true anymore in digital. 